we keep hearing following the science. What, what, is, what is science essentially? Um, it's the study of the natural world through experiment, through observation. So that's what we're doing. We're studying the disease around us. We're making observations. We're doing testing experiments to figure out exactly what's going on. And so this has caused some severe disruption for Accelerated as we have people coming in 7 in the morning till midnight. We're reporting to the health department. We're calling patients back. And at the same time, our volumes have dropped significantly. Uh, the hospitals, uh, their ICUs are empty, essentially. And they're shutting down floors. They're furloughing patients. They're furloughing doctors. So the health system has been evacuated in certain places. In New York, the health system is working at maximum capacity. In California, we're really at a minimal capacity, getting rid of our doctors and nurses because we just don't have the volume. The hospitals don't, as I've met with our CEOs twice in the last week, and we don't as well. So we're busy with paperwork for COVID, and we're all focusing on COVID. And so one of the things I'd like to talk about is when I talk to ER physicians around the country, what's happening? Well, because COVID has become the focus, people with heart disease, people with cancer, hypertension, and various things that are critical are choosing not to come in based on fear. So what that's doing is causing the health system to focus on COVID and not focus on a myriad of other things that are critical because we don't have the staff there and major, the major component is fear. People are saying, I don't want to go get seen by my doctor. What if I get the COVID? So uh, there is a, a lot of secondary effects to COVID that aren't being talked about. And so we'd like to kind of look at how, the, how we responded as a nation and why we responded. Our first initial response two months ago was a little bit of fear. We decided to shut down travel uh, to and from China. These are good ideas when you don't have any facts. We decided to keep people at home and isolate them. Even though everything we've studied about quarantine, typically you quarantine the sick. When someone has measles, you quarantine them. We've never seen where we quarantine the healthy, where you take those without disease and without symptoms and lock them in your home. So some of these things um, from what we've studied from immunology and microbiology aren't really meshing with what we know as people of you know, scientific minds that read this stuff every day. So that's kind of how we started. We don't know what's going on. We see this new virus. How should we respond? So we did that initially. And over the last couple months, we've gained a lot of data. Uh, typically in Kern County, for instance, our, we've tested 5,213 people and we have 340 positive COVID cases. Well, that's 6.5% of the population, which would indicate that there is a widespread viral infection, similar to flu. We, we think it's, it's kind of ubiquitous throughout California. We're gonna go over those numbers a little bit to kind of help you see how widespread COVID is and see how we should be responding to it based on its, its prevalence uh, throughout society or its, the existence of the cases that we already know about. So if we look at California, these numbers are from yesterday, we have 33,865 COVID cases out of a total of 280,900 total tested. That's 12% of Californians were positive for COVID. So we don't, the initial, as you guys know, the initial models were, were woefully inaccurate. They predicted millions of cases of death, not of, not of prevalence or incidence, but death. That is not materializing. What is materializing in the state of California is 12% positives. Well, if we, we have 39.5 million people. If we just take a basic calculation and extrapolate that out, that equates to about 4.7 million cases throughout the state of California, which means this thing is widespread. That's the good news. We've seen 1,227 deaths in the state of California with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? <clears throat> So that's, that's California, and that's, uh, 
I also wanted to mention that 96% of people in California who get COVID recover with almost no significant sequelae or no significant uh, continuing medical problems. So that's, that, those are important statistics for the state of California. Two months ago, we didn't know this. So I'm going to bring it to light now because we've, we're, we're sharing our own data. This isn't data filtered through someone. This is our own data. We found 6.5%. And then California has found 12%. So the more you test, the more positives you get. The, the prevalence number goes up and the death rate stays the same. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we move through this data, what I want you to see is millions of cases, small amount of death. Millions of cases, small amount of death. And you will see that in every state. And, if we, and since we, we're talking about following the science, we're going to follow the statistics and follow the science. So I want to look at New York State. They've been in the news a lot, right? And their, their numbers are critical. Let's go over their numbers. Cases of COVID as of yesterday, 256,272 cases in New York State. Not New York City, New York, the entire state. They did a total of 649,325 tests. That's 39% of New Yorkers tested positive for COVID-19. That's their ratios. This is public data online. You can all look it up. 39% of the people were tested. 39% of the people were tested. Not 39% of New York State. Right. New York State, is there's 20 million people there would be close to, you know, 4 million. Which is likely, they likely have 7.5 million cases in New York. I just want to make that clarification. Yeah. It's not 39% of every New Yorker. It's every New Yorker who's been tested. Right. So we extrapolate okay. data. I just, oh, yeah, yeah. I just want to make that clarification. We extrapolate data. We test people. And then we extrapolate for the entire community based on the numbers. The initial models were so inaccurate. They're but not even. That, but in those initial not models, a lot of them were based off if we did no social distancing. Right. Is that correct? So is it really a fair to say? Obviously, they're not as bad as they were because those were based on alternative scenarios. And some of them were were based on social distancing and still predicted hundreds of thousands of deaths, which has been inaccurate. So in New York, they the ones they tested, they found 39% positive. So if that's indicative, and they tested 649,000 people, that's a massive test. That's accurate data, 39%. So if they tested the whole state, would we indeed have 7.5 million cases? We don't know. We will never test the entire state. So we extrapolate out. We use the data we have because it's the most accurate we have versus a predictive model that have been nowhere in the ballpark of accurate. So they, how many deaths do they have? 19,410 out of 19 million people, which is a 0.1% chance of dying from COVID in the state of New York. And they have a 92% recovery rate. If you are indeed diagnosed with COVID-19, 92% of you will recover. So we're seeing millions of cases, small amount of death. Millions of cases, small amount of death. And the reason I'm making that point is because we're gonna compare this to flu and say, is this significantly different from influenza A and B? And if not, why has our response been what it is? USA, this is, this is a big one for us. Um, 802,590 cases as of yesterday. We've tested over 4 million. If you guys have studied globally what's happening, that's double what any other country. Germany's at two. I, I realize their populations are lower, but the fact that we were able to ramp up and do 4 million is pretty impressive, which gives us a 19.6% positive out of those who were tested for COVID-19. So if, if, if this is a typical extrapolation, 328 million people times 19.6 is 64 million. That's a significant amount of people with COVID. It's similar to the flu. If you study the numbers in 2017 and 2018, we had 50 to 60 million with the flu. And we had, uh, we had a similar death rate. In the deaths in the United States were 43,545. Similar to the flu of 2017-2018. We, we always have between 37 and 60,000 deaths in the United States every single year. No pandemic talk, no shelter in place, no shutting down of businesses, no sending doctors home. That's from the flu, by the way, just to clarify. 